azoospermia is the absence of sperms in the semen. Now, this is the most severe form of male infertility. Today, I am going to be discussing a topic called azoospermia. Hello friends, my name is Dr. Vandana Ramanathan. I am a consultant fertility specialist at Garbhaburi IVF Center, Bangalore. Today I am going to be discussing a topic called azoospermia. So first and foremost, you have to understand what is azoospermia. Azoospermia is the absence of sperms in the semen. Now this is the most severe form of male infertility. How do we diagnose azoospermia? So when the couple comes to us for consultation, while evaluating the male partner, we ask them to give a semen sample with a gap that is an abstinence period of 2 to 5 days. We ask them to give us the uh, semen sample at the center. This sample will be uh, checked by our andrologist and uh, we will uh, ascertain the parameters of the semen sample. So when there are no sperms in that sample, we will term it as azoospermia. So what are the types of azoospermia and what are the causes of azoospermia? So coming to types of azoospermia, there are two categories. One is there is failure of production of sperms by the testis. This is called non-obstructive azoospermia. So the second one is obstructive azoospermia where there is production of sperms, but these sperms are unable to reach the semen uh, and uh, come in the ejaculate because of an obstruction somewhere. What are the causes of azoospermia? Now coming to causes of azoospermia, there are Causes of non-obstructive azoospermia and causes of obstructive azoospermia. Causes of non-obstructive azoospermia can be hormonal disturbances like uh, uh, any hormonal uh, any hormones that help in production of sperms. If there are variations that will cause a hormonal imbalance and will affect the production of sperms, there can be genetic uh, causes. Uh, if there are any uh, if, there, if there is a missing part in the Y chromosome or there is an extra chromosome. This can affect sperm production. Then there can be trauma to the testis. There can be torsion of testis. Infection like mumps in childhood or any time during the lifetime, mumps infection has happened. So there is something called mumps orchitis, which affects with the sperm production. Varicocele, which can again affect sperm production. There can be a, a torsion of the testis and any history, previous history of chemotherapy or radiotherapy will all affect the sperm production. So these are the usual causes of non-obstructive azoospermia. Coming to causes of obstructive azoospermia, uh, first and foremost is vasectomy, where the vas deferens has been cut. It's usually done as a contraception. So if patient has a history of vasectomy in the past, that is one reason. Second, bilateral absence of vas deferens. So, there, uh, some patients can congenitally have absence of, of vas deferens, especially in a condition called cystic fibrosis. So, these patients again will have obstructive azoospermia. And then there is blockage at any level. So, blockage of uh, uh, ducts uh, between the testes and the vas, blockage between the vas and the prostate, and blockage in the ejaculatory duct. Any of these can cause obstructive azoospermia. So, uh, what are the treatable causes? Now, we have to understand that few of the causes of azoospermia may be untreatable. Especially if they are genetically associated, then they might not be treatable. Uh, whereas, treatable causes are when uh, there is uh, some patients, in spite of having uh, non-obstructive azoospermia with some genetic problems, will have very less minute quantity of sperm still being produced in their testes. So first we have to do a hormonal analysis for all patients who come with the azoospermia. So we will do a hormonal analysis and an ultrasound with a Doppler scan of the testes. This will help us ascertain uh, the cause whether it's obstructive or non-obstructive and depending on that we can offer treatment. So if it is because of low hormone production or if it is a patient who has been taking testosterone supplements, especially bodybuilders usually tend to take testosterone supplements. So we can ask them to stop that because that is going to affect with the hormones that produce sperms. So when they, uh, they will have to stop the testosterone supplements and we can offer medical management to these patients uh, who have hormonal imbalance with very less sperm production. So
So in medical management, usually hormonal injections and tablets will be given. And over a period of uh, three to six months, they can take these medications and have a reassessment of their seminal parameters. So many a times, patients can get treated with this kind of treatment. Uh, second is in case of obstructive azospermia. Again, now in obstructive azospermia, if it is because of a vasectomy, then we can do a surgery that is a reconstructive surgery where we can uh, reconnect the vas, which is called vasovasostomy. So this is one of the procedures where the obstruction can be tried to be corrected. Uh, other obstructions can uh, we have to assess where the, exactly the level of the obstruction is, and uh, a surgeon can help with the reconstructive procedures uh, like to release the obstruction. And this, if the surgery is successful, then you will be able to get sperms in the semen after that. So these are the treatment modalities for azospermia. Now, like patients who have uh, taken medical management or in whom their hormonal analysis reveals that they might not respond well to medical management, uh, we can also try other modalities. Now, and uh, especially in uh, obstructive azospermia, it is well known that their testis is producing adequate amount of sperms, but due to obstruction, it is not able to come in the semen sample. So these patients will have very good success rates when we try to extract sperms directly from the testes. So for these, we have some procedures like TESA, that is testicular sperm aspiration, where a needle is injected into the testis and sperm, sperms are extracted. There is another procedure called PESA, that is percutaneous epididymal sperm aspiration. So epididymis is the part where the sperms are stored after they are being formed. So some uh, people can have good retrieval of sperms when we perform this PESA procedure. So any patient with azospermia, with uh, especially obstructive azospermia, can undergo TESA or PESA procedure and get the sperms through this procedure. These sperms can later be used uh, to achieve a pregnancy in the partner by the modality of using of doing IVF. So uh, I hope this video has been uh, useful to you. I hope you understood what is azospermia and I hope you understood that many a times these are treatable uh, conditions and uh, if it is obstructive azospermia, you have a very good outcome. Uh, if you do testicular sperm, uh, sperm aspiration, we can use it for IVF. So please don't be uh, scared to get yourself checked because whatever, uh, however severe the male factor infertility may be, now the recent advances have helped us to achieve pregnancies in many of these patients with their own gametes. So please uh, do get yourself checked and if you like this video, please uh, share it with your friends and do subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much.